All right, good morning. Um, I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and it is 5 a.m. on a Saturday, which means Aaron's at work. Um, I wanted to make a quick video, and this is going to show off our uh, new valet tray template and basically how to make a valet tray. And uh, we're going to showcase a couple of, of uh, really nice Ron's tools in the same time. Um, because one of the tools makes this valet tray just as easy as it can be. Um, so anyway, we're going to move the camera here because you don't need to see my face. You need to see the table. So I'm going to pull that down. Here is the valet tray template. It is two pieces. Um, this one is going to be my copy because a little mosquito apparently got caught in the plexiglass while they were manufacturing it. And one, I thought that was kind of cool, but then two, I'm not going to sell somebody a squished mosquito. So anyway, it is two pieces. So there is the overall size of the, um, of the bowl itself. And then this is going to be the bottom of the valet tray. Um, and then this cutout right here, you're not going to cut it out of the bowl, but you're going to mark it on the back of the bowl. Um, so that you know where this part's going to lay inside of it. So, um, I'm going to start with, I have two squares here that are cut just a little bit oversized. I've, I've got some big square clicker dies, so I, uh, I just cut them a little bit oversized so that we can cut them down to fit using the, uh, the set here. Um, so I'm going to grab my cutting board. Uh, normally... I make the bowl out of uh, some sort of a harness or maybe a waxy or oil tan type leather. Um, and I, I like it to be pretty thick. This one right here is probably nine ounce, maybe 10 ounce. Um, so yeah, I like it to be pretty thick because then it's got rigidity and you can kind of form it with your fingers and make it, and make it work. Um, and then as far as the bottom of it, I highly suggest you use at least four to five ounce, if not heavier. Um, because you want it to press the bottom of that, the, the valet tray down and uh, whether that's glued or sewn, you want it to, to hold that flat and that's what's going to be, you know, to help everything else fold up, that's the, that bottom part needs to be flat. So, um, again, this is almost the right size, but not quite, but I am going to go ahead and trim it to fit here um, using the, uh, the template. Alright, so this is now the same size as the bottom of the bowl there, so it should fit really perfectly into this square that's been cut out, and it does. So um, now I'm going to take my larger piece here and do the same thing. And then also the, the corners of it need to be rounded. Again, this piece is just slightly um, larger than the template because I've got some big clicker dies that are pretty random in here and why not use a clicker to get it off the big side of leather and make everything else easier. So first I'm going to go ahead and just cut it off square and then I'll do the uh, the rounding of the corners. It's just the easiest way I've found to do that. I find that when you're dealing with a larger piece and you're trying to get little details like the corners in there, it just it, everything's a little more difficult. So I square it off first and then I'll come back and I'll just trim those little corners. Um, there are punches for these uh, these type corners and then we sell like a radius card, uh, basically a plastic template with different corner radiuses cut out of it to make these kind of corners easier. Um, but uh, this one, the... the uh, the template here that we're using does have the radiuses cut out on it, so... Uh, it's actually really funny, in preparation for this video, I, uh, Went ahead and stamped up the base of a, uh, you know, one of the tooled pieces um, using my uh, Berry King shell filler stamp. And um, it was a really cool 
base and everything um, turned out really badass. Problem is, I forgot to trim it to the size of the template. So maybe I'll just make a bigger valet tray. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but either way, it didn't fit the template, so it's not part of this video. So the one we're going to make is just going to have a plain um, veg tan bottom in it. And uh, it'll be a nice little giveaway to give somebody. So anyway, all right, so after that, I'm going to mark or punch my holes, okay? And these are gonna be for whatever you decide to hold the uh, the corners of it together. Uh, let me grab a finished one here so I can show you what we're talking about. I like to use these shackles right here. I think they look pretty cool on these. Um, but anyway, we've got to get those holes just right so that they're, they'll be straight and they'll be right in the right place in all these corners to pinch those corners up. Um, so yeah, that being said, uh, I have made them pretty large so that folks can choose however they want to do it. Um, I've already had reports of folks trying to put too large of a hole punch into their template and give it a whack and then they crack their template and they call me and... I am happy to replace it, but at the same time, hey, if it doesn't fit, it's not going to be made to fit. Um, so anyway, uh, what I'm going to do, though, is, because this one is, you know, I, I kind of worry if I gave this one a heck of a whack that it would uh, do the same thing and crack this template. Um, these are very heavy duty. I mean, you can drop them. They're not going to hurt them or anything, but, you know, it's, it's plastic and you can't force something too large into a spot that doesn't fit. So all I'm doing is basically marking these holes and then I go back without the template on it and uh, give this a whack and actually cut through those. A little hint when you're using these uh, hole punches like this, guys, is if you um, have a a thing of jeweler's rouge like you use on your swivel knife, you can give it a little rub around on there and it'll, it'll slide through there a lot easier. And it's more about the extraction of it. You know, you don't have to work as hard to pull it back out of the material after you've driven it through it. So. Anyway, um, a high speed buffer with polishing compound on it always works best, but I don't have that sitting in front of me. So, I'm going to get rid of all the little holes that came out of the punch there. All right, now, here's the special part. Here's the, the, the part that makes this really cool. Um, if you look at the template, again, there are, um, there is the square in the middle of it. And then there's some little lines drawn from the corner to the outside corner of this thing. And that's to remind you to... Uh, to put your um, put your lines there. Um, I couldn't, you know, cut all the way through the template because then nothing would hold it together. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to take just an ink pen. Now, some people want the finished side of their bowl on the or the finished side of the leather on the inside of the bowl. Me personally, I like it on the outside. Granted, if it's sitting on a table, nobody sees it, but I kind of like that rustic look of the uh, of the green side of the leather. Um, you know, being what folks see. So anyway, so that's why I'm doing all these markings on the back. Line that template up just right. And I'm just going to draw a line around the inside of that as accurately as I can. And there she is. All right, now I'm going to take my handy dandy ruler here and I'm going to replicate those lines that go from the corners. And basically to do that, you're going to line that ruler up with the corners of the inside square and then the, the radius corners are a little bit harder because of course they're not sharp corners. And you're just going to draw a line there too. And what you're marking is all of your gouge lines, that you need to take some material out of the back of this thing so that it folds a little bit easier and a little bit more permanently. 
So we're going to, to gouge all these. Now, I was telling you, we're going to introduce a new Ron's tool. It's not a new tool. It's just that nobody knows about it. Um, not many people know about it. This thing is absolutely amazing. Sorry. Um, this is Ron's Tool Company's uh, round gouge. They come in three different sizes. Um, most commonly, I use a number two. And when I say sizes, they're all the same width. They're all a quarter of an inch wide. The, the different size is the depth that it'll gouge your leather. Um, so yeah, these are just absolutely amazing tools. Um, I do keep them in stock at makersleathersupply.com. That being said, we are close to being out of them right now. We do have some more on order, but we're, uh, we're waiting on Merle from Ron's Tools to get those built up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my, my ruler here link along these, uh, these lines that I've drawn, but I want to put it to, to the offset just a little bit so that um, this gouge is going to run right down the center of that line. And Tandy, sorry, I should have introduced, um, this is not the only tool that does this, but I do really, in my heart, think it's the best tool that does this. Um, First off, Ron's tools are super duper sharp, and then also it's just got a really great design. Um, Tandy sells one that I believe is adjustable. I, I had one for years. I never used it. I didn't back then. I didn't realize that a Tandy tool will work if you just know how to sharpen it. Um, but uh, there are some other companies that make similar type tools. But by far, I love this one. Anyway, I'm gonna offset that just a little bit. I'm gonna get my gouge. I'm gonna dig a little bit, and then I'm just gonna push it out to the edge of the leather, okay? And I'm gonna do that on all four of the corners here. And then I'm gonna do the, uh, the, the box at the base of the uh, ballet. We did a Ask Away Monday video on this, um, but we did not record it for YouTube. And also we didn't have a template back then. We. Uh, we were just kind of using our cardboard patterns that we'd used for a long time. But these templates sure do make things nice because you can put that knife up against them and cut right around them and you don't have to measure anything. You don't have to get out your square. You don't have to worry about if it's square. You just cut. All right, so I did all four of those. Now I'm going to do the actual bottom of the bowl here. Again, this is the number two is the size I really, really like um, because mostly I, I use it for these. This is what I fold more than almost anything. Um, if I'm doing a 90 degree fold on some thick leather, I'll go up to a number three. Uh, but for general purpose, this number two serves me really, really well. So... Um, uh, really, I mean, this is kind of a soft leather anyway, but I mean, this tool just glides right through this. And this tool is about two years old, maybe three. And it, it doesn't get, I've never sharpened it. I have stropped it quite a bit, of course, but um, it really holds an edge well. All right. So there it is. So what we can do now is we can use those and fold these suckers up. Normally I'll fold the corners a little bit. And then I'll crease the, uh, the bottom part just a little. And your, your valet, the bowl part of it will start to take a little bit of shape. I'm not gonna do too much with it right now because I also still need to do the, um, the edges. I do like to burnish the edges on these. So, but there it is. Um, once you pinch those together and put those shackles on there, that's going to be a, a really nice little bowl. Um, so uh, right now I need to burnish the edges on this and on this. Okay. And then I'm going to sew this down to this. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, um, use contact cement first and get it uh, stuck on there, but then I'm going to sew it because that little stitch line looks really nice too. 
Um, I am going to go ahead and throw my maker's mark over here in the corner just so that, because this thing is pretty plain as it is. So bear with me for a second. Pretty sad. I hadn't used my maker's mark in a minute. Check and make sure I had the right side up. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use a uh, Ron's number three edger here. And I'm going to get ready to do my uh, edge burnishing on this. I'm not going to dye any of the edges on this part of it, but I will dye the edges on that part. Um, this, uh, this leather that I've chosen for this, is a, it, it just doesn't need the dye on the edges. It looks really nice um, without being dyed first. So, some of these scraps here. Honestly, it really looks good with even naked edges without, you know, burnishing it just uh, with edge beveling like this. This leather is just perfect for it. Um, so maybe I won't even burnish it. Just leave it rough. And uh, if you, as long as you've got a good edger that leaves a good clean line all the way around it, you can do that. Um, but if your edger is kind of choppy on it, you know, and leaves a lot of marks, then, yeah, you may want to burnish it just to clean those up. So um, I need to step over here and grab my number two edger. Um, I haven't really given any kind of a close-up, but there we go. Um, you can see all the gouge lines really well there. Uh, I need to step over here and grab my number two edger so I can do this part right here right quick. Um, I realize that Ron's edgers cost a little bit more than um, just about anybody else out there. But if you ever use one, then uh, you'll see why. Um, it's a reason, there's a reason that you know, Cadillacs cost more than Pintos. Uh, but anyway, and I've, I've, I've told a lot of folks this, but if you ever want to try a Ron's edger, then order one. If you don't like it, send it back to me. I'll give you a full refund. But you'll like it, so I don't worry about that. All right, I'm gonna dye that edge right quick and um, and burnish it, and then we're gonna cut the camera because I'm going to go and sew the bottom of it um, over there on one of the machines. And you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> it's um, whether you're hand sewing or machine sewing, I mean, it's just basic sewing. We're just going to sew it right along the bottom of the bowl, so it's no biggie. Okay. This is just um, Angelus brand uh, dark brown dye is all this is. And I'm applying it with a dauber. It gets a pretty good coat around the edge and it'll give a nice uh, finished look around the sides of that. Um, when I go to sew this in a minute, I'm going to use um, natural colored thread. It's not white. It's not brown. It's just kind of, I don't know, maybe taupe would be a word for it. But anyway, I'd, since I started using the natural thread, I just, I don't like white anymore. It, uh, I mean, it almost makes your project uh, or your stitch line glow compared to um, its brown surroundings. So This is um, Ron's Edge Rub, also from the Ron's Tool Company. Anybody that's watching any of my videos has seen me use the heck out of this stuff. It is a really great edge burnishing compound. Makes life simple, makes life fast. I get a lot of people asking about the, uh, the applicator thing here. Um, they're really hard for me to get, and when I can get them, they're pretty damn expensive. But uh, 
when I when I can get them, I try to announce it on Facebook or something that maybe I have a few of them in stock. So I get people weekly messaging me asking if I have any of those in stock. So all right. All right, now I'm going to use some contact cement here, and I'm going to coat just the inside of these lines on this, and then I'm going to coat the bottom of this, and um, we'll stick it together. Um, so, yeah. I'm not going to use a ton of it, pretty thin. A thin coat is going to do just fine, um, mostly because, well, we're also about to sew it. But it will help with the rigidity of the project and keeping the, uh, you know, the base of it really nice and flat against your table. Because when it's sewn or when it's um, contact cemented together, it's it's. I mean, the weather's just twice as strong in that area. Spread's real easy on this leather because the leather's really smooth even on the back, and it's not a. I, I didn't um, scuff it up or anything. Um, I could if I wanted a better, uh, you know, a better bond. I could scuff it up a little bit with some sandpaper or something, but it's just not needed on this project. All right, let that set for a second. Um, this contact cement is the, the one that it's our brand and uh, it, it sets really, really quickly. So this is going to be ready in just a matter of moments here. And I'm going to do everything I can to keep this as centered as possible because once it's down on there, it's going to be pretty hard to reposition. be one of the best ones I've ever done as far as centering goes. Alright, I'll take me a flat faced hammer here and just give it a couple of taps. You can use a roller or anything really to do that, but this hammer is fastest. Okay, um, I am going to pause the video for a few minutes because I'm going to step over there to a sewing machine and um, get that going and when we uh, we come back I'll uh, we'll, we'll put the little shackles on it and do a little bit of final forming and this thing's gonna be good to go um, my sew line is just gonna go right around the inside edge there maybe um, eighth to a quarter of an inch in I don't know um, maybe three sixteenths just to split the difference anyway um, we'll see you in just a second all right so we paused the video and we went and sewed Around this, I need to burn the, uh, the edges of my strings there. I uh, sewed that on a Cobra Class 4. Um, I could have gotten away with it with a 26, but my 26 has some colored thread in it right now, and I didn't feel like uh, um, re-threading it. <clears throat> so anyway, I also have four of these uh, little shackles here. Um, we do have these um, in our shop um, available for sale. I need to get them on the website, uh, especially now that we're about to release the... Uh, templates um, on the website. So anyway, you're going to take, um, pull the the bar out of the little shackle here, and um, you'll pinch that corner together, put your shackle over the corner, and then put the bar back in it. Again, you can use rivets, you can use Chicago screws, you can use nuts and bolts, you can use a toothpick. It doesn't matter what you use. I am a huge fan of these shackles. I really like them. I get a lot of compliments on these valet trays because of the shackles. And uh, so that's what I use. Um, I am a little bit um, OCD on the, uh, the shackles, and I make sure that all of the, um, the screw posts on them are pointing 
the same direction. So as it goes all the way around, um, they're all pointing the same direction. So that was one. We got three to go. I should have taken these bars out before I unpaused the camera, but sorry, folks. You're going to have to watch me do it. Um, I've even seen people use uh, snaps on these corners, and uh, even that's a pretty cool idea, too. Took me a while when designing this, though, um, the template. I wanted it to where the shackles didn't fall down over the edges and the corners there. So it took me a little bit to uh, get these holes in the right place. Designing the template, anybody that knows me, computers are just not my forte. Um, I'm not very, uh, very savvy on computer speak. So anyway. corner coming through. The only other thing I'll do is I'll take and kind of pull these down a little bit so it really has a neat rounded um, appearance to it and everything. And um, yeah, that's it. The valet tray. Um, again, you can you can tool the bottom of it. Uh, you can use you know textured leather stuff like that. You can do anything with these. That's the awesome thing about them. The possibilities are just limitless because it's just a blank five inch canvas um in there so or it's about five that thing's a little bit smaller than five inches i don't know anyway but white canvas nice easy square so lots of uh lots of opportunity anyway um i really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video um if you're interested in the templates they are on makersleathersupply.com and um yeah hope you all have a good one we'll see you next time and make it with makers thanks